Hey, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. Today we are talking about our top rated club recipes. It's very exciting. It is exciting. So we have this club. It's called the Freezer Meals 101 Club. It's kind of a mouthful, but it's exciting because you can make all of these customizable recipes and meal plans and it gives you shopping lists and prep lists and it gives an opportunity for our club members to rate the recipes. And so it's kind of interesting for us to go through and see mm -hmm. like what people are rating things and of course in order to make it into the club it has to be a good recipe. We have to like it. Yes. Now I am not super picky. I'm a little bit picky, but I don't have, okay. You know when you watch cooking shows or like chef shows and they do tests on the palate and stuff? She would win these <laughs> and I would not. I don't, I don't have a really strong sense of smell. I don't have a really strong sense of taste. I'm a texture person. I, yep. I struggle with textures a bit sometimes. So if I don't like it, it's definitely out. If she doesn't like it, it's still out. It's still out. You'll never, it'll never see the light of day. So sometimes you'll see them in our videos because we're testing and we're like, we're making it for the first time ourselves. But if both of our families don't love it, and that's a lot of people because we've, between our two families, it's a lot of people. Yeah. So if we don't love it, then it never makes it into the club. So these are ones that have made it into the club, but then also have high ratings from club members. So that means that multiple people loved these recipes. So, but it was so interesting to go mm -hmm. through and be like, oh. And do you know what's really funny? One of our most popular recipes wasn't actually rated at all. The beef stroganoff, the ground beef stroganoff. Yeah, I think it had one rating. It was a five star rating, yeah. but it only had one rating. So it means that either People are just like, I love it, I'll make it again. And there is a section in the club where you can write notes that only you see. Yes. So you can write like, yes, definitely make this again. Or next time we should make it with less this or more of that. Or, right. or serve this with this on the side. You know, those kind of notes. But so we don't, we can't see those. We, we can't see those for, for the club right. members. So I don't know if people are like, oh, this is awesome. And you know. But we get emails about it in, in our Facebook group. It comes up in the Facebook group. Because, yeah, a lot. Okay, we're going to be honest. Even though it isn't on this list, we're going to talk about it for a minute. It, it's kind of ugly looking. Oh, it's I mean, ugly. it's ground beef, which is fine. But then it's with mushroom soup and it's kind of a sour gravy cream and, and sour and cream. And, and it's gray. Yeah. It's like, it's gray. There isn't a single thing that <laughs> looks appetizing about this. However, the taste is amazing. And so the taste counts. Yeah. The taste got it into the club. And that's the funny part. There have been people in our Facebook group that have said, you know, I looked at that and thought that looks horrible, but I, you guys keep raving about it. So we tried it and it's actually really delicious. So if you are a club member, go rate it. Go rate it. Next go. time we do a video, we want that to make, well, actually, we don't necessarily want that to make it into the video if you don't love it. That's just the top of ours because yeah. we did a we did a video recently. Ooh, put it there of our favorite our top ten recipes twenty twenty two of twenty twenty two. Yeah, so a bit ago now, but that but yeah, so we have our own personal favorites, but it's super interesting to, to go see through today what other people love and like see what other people like, and some of them were not a surprise. No, and a few of them were like. Ooh, they tried it on our recommendation because it's just like weirdness and but and then they liked it right it's so it's yeah okay. so I'm gonna get into that one right now which is called that lady's chicken <laughs> it is a family recipe that we have been, I've been making it forever and ever and ever um, super friendly for the freezer because you're just dumping four ingredients in a bag and then you can cook it in your oven or in your slow cooker. So it's so easy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I love those four ingredient recipes, five ingredient recipes, because totally. they're fast to put together. But this one has strange ingredients. So you're gonna put your chicken in the bag. You can use boneless, skinless chicken breasts or boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And then you're gonna add a bottle of Russian salad dressing. If you can't find Russian dressing, you can substitute Catalina. 
It's not quite the same, but it's still really, really good. Then you're going to put three tablespoons of dry onion soup mix, which is the same as one packet of onion soup mix. We get our onion soup mix from Bulk Barn. We get an MSG free one. And so we measure it out by the tablespoon. It's less expensive that way. And then you're gonna use some apricot jam. So <laughs> we laugh, but we have actually, maybe not in the club, but we have other recipes that we have definitely done with apricot jam. And they're all kind of in the same vein, like the sticky chicken does it, um, the big cook. There's one in there called the amazing chicken and oh, it yes. has it. And, yeah. and so it's similar, but in this case, way more simple. Yeah, so really, that's it. Four ingredients, including your chicken, and you're done. So you're gonna take your air out of your bag because air causes your freezer burn, and lay that flat to freeze. And then, like I said, you can just cook it in the slow cooker or in the oven. It has so much sauce with it, so I really recommend that you make this either with rice or mashed potatoes mm -hmm. so that you can spoon the sauce onto there. And if you have leftover sauce and a little bit of leftover chicken, you can make a soup with adding some other things in there. And it has, again, strange flavor, but it's good. Strange ingredients, but the flavor is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> and apparently we're not the only ones that think that because it, it had high it had, rating in it the had a high rating. The next one actually wasn't a surprise to us because it is one of our favorites for sure. It is egg roll in a bowl. And... It is a little bit more complicated to put together, but the flavor impact makes it so worth it. So we start out with ground pork or ground Italian sausage that's been browned. Charlotte likes it spicy and Christy likes it mild. Um, we're gonna add in some diced onion, minced garlic, shredded carrots, some onion powder, red pepper flakes, ginger. Now we use squeezy tube ginger because um, we go through it fast enough that we don't um, waste it, but also we don't have to stand there and mince ginger by hand. So we like to use that one. We use low sodium soy sauce. It is important that you use low sodium soy sauce. This is one of those recipes that we started with and when we first made it, we thought, oh, it's way too salty, way too salty. And for Christy to say that, it I, means it's really too salty. It really is. I grew up in a house where like things are salted and peppered and you put salt in your pasta, you put salt in your potatoes. And I really notice if salt is missing. So for me to say that was too salty, it was too salty. Uh, a little bit of sesame oil and some olive oil or vegetable oil. And then at the very end, we add in a bag of coleslaw mix, like just a bag of coleslaw mix from your regular grocery store. Cabbage freezes beautifully. When you go to cook this up, you're gonna let it thaw and you're going to just do it right in a skillet. This is gonna take five or 10 minutes max. To make this like an egg roll, Sometimes you can just eat it like this or sometimes at our house we put it over rice because we do find that this one is maybe a little bit on the smaller side to feed four people. Mm -hmm. So uh, oftentimes my husband and I will just have it for lunch or I'll take out two bags if we're going to make it as a family dinner because that, that coleslaw actually cooks down quite a bit. When you start cooking cabbage it really reduces but it does freeze nicely and it is a good one. This next one was also not a surprise at all because both of our families love it. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. It has become one of the ones it. that we make um, out of rotation. Like yes. if we make it with one of our mega sessions, we enjoy it, but then you miss it and you're like, oh, I want to, I want to eat that again. Yeah. And so you make it on its own. We, I used to do that with the ground beef stroganoff all the time. Yeah. And this is now one that we make on a, outside of rotation, and I'm glad to have it. It's one of the ones where if Christina are planning videos, because like she said, if, if you're new here, Christy and I are neighbors and friends, and we have been doing freezer meals together for over 11 years. We did them separately before before she moved in and we discovered that we both do freezer meals. How handy. And so every three months we get together and we make, I'll put a video link right there of like 150 freezer meals, but we get together and we make over a hundred freezer meals every three months and that stocks our family. But now that we're doing this YouTube channel, we are sometimes doing videos in between of like, smaller 
things to show you how easy it is to do freezer cooking. And so it's funny because with a recipe like this, we will- We'll, we'll barter. Like, yeah, we'll add it into like, you know, we'll be like, oh, we should do fall freezer meals. But, oh, I mean, back in the fall, right? And so we're like, ooh, this one would be perfect. Like we're trying to like fit it in. I mean, obviously, it's in our sheet pan freezer meals video because it's a sheet pan meal. You haven't even said the name of it yet. Oh, sorry. It is, oh. it is our Cajun sausage and root <gasps> vegetables sheet pan dinner. It's so good. And like the colors and stuff made mm -hmm. it perfect for our fall freezer meals video. And it was in our um, sheet pan freezer meal. But, I, but we fit it in, I don't even remember, but recently we fit it into another video too because... We just like to make it so that we can eat it. So that we can eat it. And so we either take turns eating it or we do a barter system where you can have it this time if I can have the, you know, the extra, well, or the next one that we'll talk about. Yes, and, um, we're, and last time we made two why. of them. So that we could each have one. Yeah. It's kind of funny. So it is that good. So we're yeah. not surprised that it was a high rating. No, and when we do our mega sessions, we make four of every meal, at least. Some of them are six. Sometimes. Um, And so or eight with the corn chowder. But so for this one, we'll do four and then we each end up with two, but then we run out because we use it so quickly. It's an easy go-to and because it's a sheet pan meal, it's easy to make, it's fast, it's minimal cleanup and it's yeah. a full meal. So it's um, it, it checks all the boxes. The downside to this one is that there's a little more prep involved. And so that's why we recommend that if you're gonna make one, you make multiples because if you're gonna do the prep anyway, you might mm -hmm. as well make multiples of it and have that all set for yourself. After all that, we'll get to the recipe. <laughs> In we your... built the suspense. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> In your large <laughs> freezer bag, you're going to put a garlic sausage, also called kubasa here in Canada. If you're in the US, you might be calling it kielbasa, but it's that, you, you know, Ukrainian sausage or garlic sausage. So you slice a garlic sausage ring and put that in your large freezer bag. And then you're going to add a coarsely chopped zucchini, some sweet potato that's been cubed and peeled, a butternut squash that has also been peeled and cubed. And so that's where you get, you know, a little bit more work on your prep here. Then a splash of olive oil, one to two tablespoons of Cajun seasoning, and some salt. You're going to shake that all around to combine, take out the excess air, seal it, freeze it, and on the day you go to cook this, you just put it on your sheet pan. We recommend that you put some parchment paper or foil down on your sheet pan. It depends on how much you like to clean. To make clean up a little easier, but that's <laughs> up to you. And this only cooks for 35 minutes. So and it's done. you've got dinner. Now, for this one, you can also throw some baby potatoes mm -hmm. that are cut in half or some cubed, like larger potatoes, you sure. know, kind of in the same size, similar size to those sweet potatoes and squash cubes that you had. And you can throw those on the exact same sheet. Again, just one dish. One. I one, love, one I love dish. sheet pan. I like, I, <laughs> I love sheet pan because. It's one dish. So you've got your one dish and throw it all on there and dinner is ready. This next recipe is a Christy approved recipe. It is not a Charlotte approved recipe because she does not eat beef and she's allergic to broccoli. And this is a beef and broccoli sheet pan. <laughs> now, she has the ability to look at the, the recipe and say, hey, these look like they would go nicely together. We should try this. Yeah. My family does enjoy it, except for my son, who seems to feel like he doesn't like broccoli, even though I keep insisting that he probably does if he would just eat it and try it. But, you know, I can only encourage so much. And one of my daughters <laughs> likes to go over to their house when they're having broccoli because, you know, we can't have it here. And she loves broccoli. She loves she broccoli. Like, like, yeah. Anyway. It's funny. And she loves, because we eat a lot of potatoes at our house. Yes. And so broccoli and potatoes, she comes to our house. And we're more of like a rice and pasta house. It's super interesting because after these mega sessions, Christy and I end up with the same meals, but 
We eat them in different orders. And we eat them, yeah, you eat your chicken marinades first and I eat them last because they require more side dishes, which is like more effort on my part. And yeah, and we, we eat things so differently. Like the side dishes for, we've talked about doing a video of just side dishes? Where, no, oh. when we, like, oh, yeah. where we what, show... What we would make with a certain meal? Yeah, We should actually get we it together do and do one of those. Because That'd then be we could one. eat the same things all week. Yes. And be like, okay, what are we going to take out today? And then show how we... And we even cook it differently because mm -hmm. she's got... A, a lot of our recipes have multiple cooking instructions on them, like whether it's oven, barbecue, slow cooker, skillet, whatever. I just got an air fryer. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and I I don't like using my slow cooker a lot unless it's for very specific things. Like I I don't like putting chicken in the slow cooker. I always seem to overcook it and then it even though it shouldn't be dry, it seems dry. I don't know. I do it wrong. I I think it's a me problem. So I would rather do it in the oven or in a skillet or on a barbecue than in the slow cooker, and she lives in her slow cooker. Well, I have kids with a lot of medical appointments, and so I'm mm -hmm. often gone during the day, and so to be able to come home and yeah. like walk in and smell that supper is, that's that dinner is done. That's a very good feeling, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's such a good feeling. It and is. so, you know, that's one reason, but Christy taught me how, I never occurred to me, ever, that you could cook chicken in a skillet. <laughs> and then do you remember the night? She taught me how. Yeah. I felt kind of bad that night because yeah. we both had chicken hurry. We were talking on the phone. And I'm like, oh, funny. I'm having chicken hurry tonight. And you're yeah. having chicken. Why don't I bring mine over and we just have a big meal and we have the chicken hurry. And I cook mine in a skillet and it cooks the sauce down and it caramelizes a bit. And yes. it, the color is rich. So good. And um, she cooked hers in the oven, which increases the juice. The juice doesn't get a chance to to evaporate off and mine like looked sad like it was like less color it was like kind of and so we put them gray. side by side on the table and everybody ate mine first and no. i was embarrassed was and she was embarrassed for <laughs> like it wasn't really like, well yeah and it's the same recipe isn't that funny it's, we made them together like we like, assembled them together we were here the same recipe. one of us probably made both of them yes definitely and, and um, it was just the cooking method made a big difference. And the taste was probably the same in the end. Me, mine might have had a little more flavor because of the caramelization. Because it's got the char. And, yeah. Yeah. And, like, and then there's a chicken that we have called Marry Me Chicken that I'm surprised that it has. I don't think enough people have made it yet. You should make you the, should Marry, make me the Marry Me Chicken and go vote on it. But that's one where, like, really you have to cook it in a skillet. I mean, oh. there's other cooking instructions on there, but like- Oh, you need to cook it down. And where it gets, you So know. the stuff that's in the bottom of your skillet when you're making chicken is called fond. It's Ooh. that, it has a name. And that you can scoop it back up and baste your chicken in it while you're doing it. And and so when you deglaze your pan, like if you want to put wine or something, uh, chicken stock to deglaze the pan and make a sauce with it, you're pouring it in on the fond. Ooh, Ooh fancy, fancy. I, I do watch cooking shows. <laughs> Doesn't always make me a better cook, but I'll get to the beef and broccoli. Yeah, I was Here like, I made you go way, I made us go way off onto a tangent, but just, That's part know, of the fun. That is Come with us fun. on our journey. Okay, we start out with our beef stir fry strips, and you can buy them already cut, or you can get a steak and cut your own strips. We add broccoli florets, we add frozen ones because um, we could do it, but Charlotte couldn't do the prep. I would have to do the prep on it, which is fine. I don't mind, but it is, if it's already frozen and it's gonna be frozen, it's just easier to just add the broccoli florets and bam, it's already in there. It's often less expensive as well. Especially right now yeah. with the price of groceries. You bet it is. Um, again, with the low sodium soy sauce, if we say it in the recipe, we mean it. You should have the low sodium soy sauce. We're gonna add in garlic, honey, bit of brown sugar, sesame oil, rice vinegar, ginger, salt and pepper, and a little pinch of cayenne pepper. And then for the day of cooking, you're gonna thaw it and put it out on your sheet pan. We really do recommend putting foil on for this one because it is a little bit of a messy one because then all of that sauce that is in there as it's cooking, we want to, or before it starts cooking rather, we're going to put in a bit of cornstarch to thicken it and so that it makes a nice rich sauce. 
um, while it's cooking in your oven. So you want to do, you know, your tablespoon of cornstarch with cold water and mix those together and then add it in and just mix it really well. You could even put it in the bag and mix it nicely before you dump it out onto your sheet pan. And then if you're feeling especially fancy, you can sprinkle some chopped green onions and some sesame seeds on it. And it's really delicious. Mm -hmm. You can just trust me. I trust you because I am not going to ever eat the beef and broccoli. No, you won't. <laughs> and that's okay. For multiple reasons. <laughs> But my kids might make their way over to your house. If I ever do a double batch, I'll call you and let you know. Yeah, it's been quite funny because our kids have kind of grown up like cousins. Yeah, a little bit, hey? And so, you know, we've got pictures of them together from when they were like really little. And we they just are like cousins or siblings or, It was you kind know? of this little storybook almost. Yes. It? It's been I, very nice. It's, I... I wish that for you. Amazing neighbors. It yes. enriches your life so much. It's true. And better, amazing neighbors that will do freezer meals with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this last recipe, okay, it's kind of no surprise, but then it is a bit of a surprise. And that is our taco meat. Now, we know how good it is, and we know that it's a little different than most taco meat that's out there. Well, for real, most people would just get their ground beef, they would add their packet of taco seasoning mm -hmm. and follow the directions on the back of the package and then you make your tacos. That's fine. I've done that many times. Even after doing freezer meals, I have still done that and there isn't really anything wrong with doing that, but we did kick it up a notch. We did. Yeah. And it is better, kind of. I don't know if I should say better. It It is it is, okay. It is it's better. better. It's better. Also, one of the things about having taco meat in your freezer, because, you know, what Krista just described with the, you're browning your beef and you're adding the, the taco packet and a little bit of water, like it's easy, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you think, well, I could do that anytime. The thing about having the taco meat in your freezer is, first of all, you can take advantage of sales on ground beef. You can buy large quantities and then cook this all up at once and then you know have it in your freezer ready to go and then you paid so much less for it mm -hmm. um secondly you can make this for all kinds of different things instead of doing it in a large bag you can actually section it out and do it into smaller bags if either there's only one or two of you that are going to be eating this or if you want to use it for things like sprinkling on top of nachos mm -hmm. or having it in your eggs or having it, um, oh, it, we always do tacos in a bag, like the walking tacos, but for that, I would recommend a large bag. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can do with taco meat. I like to do it in a pasta. So you take your taco meat, you cook up your pasta, you actually stir this into your cooked pasta and then you just sprinkle like green onions mm. and your tomatoes, like all that kind of stuff. Not the lettuce though, on top Fair. and some cheese, some cheddar cheese, and then bake it. And you have like this taco pasta bake thing that was really easy because your taco meat was already done and you know, and then taco salad. We love that we too. We love taco salad. So. Taco meat, so versatile, and there's so many things once it's in your freezer you can and, do with it. And it's a thin bag, it defrosts yes. quickly. Yes. And it, it just is, re oh yeah, taco salad, I have done this a million, that's my go-to for a potluck. And not that we've had right. a lot of opportunity to have potlucks over the last couple of years, but now that they're back in full swing, I um, definitely, this is my go-to for a potluck. This yeah. and the now the barbecue baked beans. Oh, the cowboy baked beans. Oh, oh there's, barbecue baked beans. It's cowboy. Cowboy, cowboy, cowboy baked, baked beans. beans. Oh, they're so good. They, there's bacon in there. Spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> everything's better with bacon. Okay, let's get to the taco meat. Okay, so she's keeping me on track today. Usually, I'm not. I'm on my meds. One. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you've got your ground beef. It's been browned. Now you're gonna add some finely chopped onion, four tablespoons of taco seasoning, which is kind of like the equivalent of one of those packets. You can use a packet if you prefer. We buy our taco seasoning in a large container or we make our own. 
some tomato sauce, chili sauce, and then right into this bag, you're gonna add some shredded cheddar cheese. And that's really the thing that sets this apart. Like the chili sauce and tomato sauce and the minced onion do add some zing and they do make it taste really good. But it's that cheese that like, as it melts down, as this cooks, and then of course with tacos, you're gonna add more cheese. Cause mm -hmm. that's one of the toppings of a taco. Like, Hello. You know, you gotta always have more cheese, but it, you know, we, we, somebody in our comments once said they measure cheese with their heart. And so we go with that. We, now. we feel you, we get it. And so you're going to put that in your bag, take all the air out, you know, like Christy said, it makes a very thin bag, which makes it thaw really quickly. And on the day that you go to make it, you can just heat it in your skillet, it cooks up really fast, or you can do this in the slow cooker if you prefer. And yeah. You just use it however you would use taco meat and experiment a little. You could mix this with rice and put it as stuffed green peppers, stuffed peppers. You totally could. Yeah, Mexican stuffed peppers. And I mean, we have a recipe for that. Yes. But this would also work. Yeah. You know. They're like, if you haven't done anything with your taco meat Ooh, other than Mexican just Mexican stuffed baked potatoes, double baked potatoes. Oh, yeah. Mm. Why not? There's, there's so many uses for taco meat. And when you have them in your freezer and you don't have to have like anything on hand because it's just there waiting for you, then you do branch out and try a little bit more. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. It's true. Well, we hope that you enjoyed our foray into our highest voted meals in the club. We're gonna put a link right there to that video that we were talking about where we share our personal favorites. Mm -hmm. You don't have to trust us necessarily, but some of them overlap with the ones from today, I think. Oh, I think there's probably a few in there that we've seen so before. And so you can take kind of our word and all the club members' words and, uh, and maybe make a few of these. If you're interested in learning more about the club, the link is down below. We're just so happy that you joined us today. And we'll see you next time. Happy cooking.